On either side the river lie, long fields of barley and of rye, that clothe the world and meet the sky, and through the field the road runs by, to many towered Camelot. The poem opens with a vivid description of a landscape. Here the poet Tennyson mentions a river that runs through fields of grains. The grains that he mentions here are barley and rye. He says, the barley and rye clot or cover the wold. Wold here is an old word for an open, unforested piece of land. So through this field, there is a road running towards the castle of Camelot. Here Camelot is believed to be the legendary home of King Arthur and his knights. And up and down the people go, gazing where the lilies blow, round an island there below, the island of Shallot. Here the poet talks about the road leading to Camelot. It must have been a very busy and well-traveled road. The people who use this road can look down and see an island in the middle of the river. This island, the poet says, is surrounded by lilies and it is called the island of Shallot. It must have been a very, very beautiful island. Willows whiten, aspens quiver, little breezes dusk and shiver through the wave that runs forever by the island in the river flowing down to Camelot. Here we get more information about the island. We hear about the willow trees that grows on the river banks and also the aspen trees that shakes or quivers as the breeze blows. It says, as they dusk and shiver. Here we can sense a little chill of darkness and mystery in these lines. As the breeze blows, the river is also disturbed. So, it creates a wave, and this wave runs forever by the island in the river. The river is said to be flowing down to Camelot. Four grey walls and four grey towers overlook a space of flowers, and the silent isle embowers the Lady of Shallot. Here the poet talks about four grey walls and four grey towers. These are mini castles found in the island. The island is also said to be surrounded by beautiful flowers. But the strange thing about this island is that it embowers or it imprisons the Lady of Shallot. It imprisons a woman whose name is unknown but is often referred to as the Lady of Shallot. By the margin willow veiled, slide the heavy barges trailed by slow horses, and unhailed the shallow flitted silken sail, skimming down to Camelot. On the banks of the river, with willow trees growing all around, the heavy barges are seen being pulled by slow horses. And not only that, the shallop or the small light boats are seen being pushed by their silky sails down to Camelot. But who had seen her wave her hand, or at the casement seen her stand, or is she known in all the land, the Lady of Shallot? The speaker here is curious. He wonders if anyone had seen the Lady of Shallot wave her hand, or seen her standing at the window. He wonders if anyone in the land knows her at all. Only reapers reaping early in among the bearded barley hear a song that echoes cheerily from the river winding clearly down to towered Camelot. It is believed that the harvesters or the farmers who wake up very early in the morning have heard the Lady of Shallot sing. Here it says, she sings very cheerfully, and her singing echoes from the river down to Camelot. And by the moon the reaper weary, piling sheaves in uplands airy, listening, whispers, this the fairy, Lady of Shallot. 
The beautiful singing of the Lady of Shalad can be heard even at night. The reapers or the harvesters would hear her sing as they pile up their sheaves. They would listen and whisper to themselves, Listen, it's the fairy, the Lady of Shalad. With this we come to the end of part one.